When you're crafting, do you ever just wish there were easier ways to do things or things that make crafting, card making a little bit less stressful or frustrating? Then stick around because I'm going to share with you some five amazing card making hacks that will change the way you craft. Now, some of you may have already heard of these things. Some of these um, ideas may be new to you, um, but I wanted to share them with you because I think they're pretty amazing and I use them myself every single time I craft and it makes my crafting much more enjoyable and easier. So one of the things that is a big trend on the crafting market are those tools that are spatulas to apply different types of media through stencils. Well, I came across a DIY spatula tool that I created using a silicone facial mask applicator from all places of the Dollar Tree. Now, when I first looked at it, I thought, okay, this is going to be a little bit problematic because it is actually not, it's curved at the at the base of the spatula. Um, and you'll see what I mean when I show it to you. So here it is, and it's sassy plus chic, and this is the spatula. And if you look really closely, that silicone tip there is curved. But I am going to modify that. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So because this facial applicator is thick at the base where it meets the handle and thinner at the very top where it's at the very, very tip and that's the part that's curved. I can simply use a pair of scissors to uh, cut it so that it's completely at a straight edge or better yet, uh, instead of cutting it, because I'm not really good at that, freehanding it, I just took my guillotine paper trimmer and cut it so it has a nice straight, e straight edge. And here you go. It's perfect. There's a little tip there that I still need to trim off, and I wind up doing that. But I wanted to show you how well this works, and you cannot beat a dollar. So you can have several of these. What's brilliant about finding this and using this as a tool is this is made out of silicone. So guess what? Nothing sticks to it. You can let it sit and dry overnight and then just peel it off the next day. So here I am demonstrating a paste and watch it. Watch how nicely this goes down. So it's completely flat and you can smear it around and get most perfect results just like you would any other spatula tool. So here's the bonus. See all that paste I have left over on there? If I left it and dry, let it dry and walk away and came back, I could simply peel it off and because uh, it's non-stick, it's silicone. And look at the results that you get. Pretty flat and really, really nice application, all for using a Dollar Tree facial applicator that I just turned into my own spatula. I love it. So if you are saying, I don't have a Dollar Tree next to me, go to any type of low cost store where you can find even those small tiny spatulas, but you want to make sure that you are looking for something that is silicone. So something that's really flexible and feels very soft to the touch, not the hard plastic, but you want something that's flexible like this. And when you find that, you can actually just use those small spatulas and achieve the exact same results. So this next hack, I should say it's more like a tip, is probably one of my favorites and it's because it makes working with magnetic dyes so much less painful and, and it's easy. Um, so I discovered this simply by um, accident. I was shopping on Amazon and I came across this tool that is a telescoping magnetic grip. So it is about the size of a, of a, of a marker, as you can see. And what I love about this is it's telescoping. And why do I have this? Because so many times I will drop a thin die and I'm like, where did that thing go? And you know, you don't want to vacuum it because you're going to lose your die. But if you just get something like this with a magnet at the very, it's got a very strong magnet at the tip, and you just wave your wand around, guess what? You can find that magnet and there you go. See, there's my hugs die that I had lost sitting under a piece of paper. But if you drop these on the floor, easy peasy, just extend the telescoping wand run your telescoping wand on the floor or your carpet and anything that is metal will attach to it and it's super easy and compact and I love this. I use this all the time. So this next is more of a tip and possibly a hack for those of you who think it might be a hack. Um, how about labeling your die cutting machine? So how many times do you go through and you have the perfect die and you want to use your small die cutting machine but you always forget what the size of the paper should be width wise? 
Well, I decided to make it easy for myself so that when I go to my paper trimmer, I don't have to think about it. I can actually just put a piece of paper in my trimmer and ba because I put a piece of tape that tells me the width of the die opening section, I don't have to think about it anymore. I'll just go, okay, I know that my paper has to be less than 2.5 inches widthwise to go right through the machine. Now if you want, you can take it a step further and actually measure the plates lengthwise so then you know widthwise and lengthwise how big your paper has to be. So I'm okay not labeling the length and I'm good with that. This next one is one of my favorites. So I've started doing this recently because it makes my crafting a little bit easier. So sometimes when you are working with very thin paper or even like the 6x6 paper pads, those pieces of paper don't tend to be very thick. And this is a really good hack, especially if you're going to do layering die stacks on top of each other. Um, I usually just take two pieces of 60 pound cardstock and of course I measured it because I know that it will fit through my stall, small die cut. But here's my hugs die and I know that it is not super tall so I don't need to adhere this entire piece of paper that I've cut to the uh, correct width to go through my small die cutting machine. And you can just measure your die to see exactly where you need to put that glue. And when you are adhering the two pieces of paper together to create a thicker piece of cardstock. You don't really need to push too hard because once you put that die on top and you run it through the die cutting machine, the pressure from the die cutting machine is going to handle the adhering of the paper together. So I've put two pieces of cardstock together that is 60 pound weight and of course I did cut it so I know it will go through my die cutting machine. I did I make sure it was the less than 2.5 inches in width. Put my die cut on top and then I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And you'll see me flip it around because I need to get a little bit more traction by flipping it around to get it to go through the machine a little bit easier. So I'll flip it around because it didn't go through. It's like, okay, I'll flip it around, goes through. And just because the cardstock is now a little bit thicker with that adhesive between, I just run it through a couple of times to make sure that it really gets cut with nice crisp lines. And you'll be able to see that when I pull it out, the die cut comes out beautifully. And now it's thicker, so it's a lot less flimsy to deal with. This works really, really well if you have those die cuts that are very, very fine and delicate. So what I like about this is instead of having to put cardstock on four times and gluing the back each time, if you do two or three, then you don't have to waste time doing all that. So this next one is a DIY embossing stick, and you're probably scratching your head going, uh, Katio, what is that? So let me show you. There are times where I am trying to take those delicate die cuts, and I want to emboss them, but I don't like sticking my fingers in my embossing ink and getting that stuff all over my fingers and then feeling that embossing powder sticking all over my fingers. I can't stand that. It's a, it's a sensory thing, right? So... I decided to pull out my emboss it, uh, clear embossing ink and I ran out of ink. It was very dry to the touch so I decided to ring ink it just using some glycerin, vegetable glycerin. And you can get this at the drugstore for very, uh, very inexpensively. So I just showed you that I put a few drops here. I actually went back and put a lot more but then I just used my new spatula that I created and I uh, smush the ink so that it, the ink pad is really saturated with that glycerin. So then I know that I'm gonna get a really, really good results with uh, lots of ink that I can use to emboss with. So enter in my wonky DIY embossing stick. <laughs> and you're like, what is that? This is a carpenter shim. And what I decided to do was put this oven liner, which is non-stick by the way, it's what you would use in your oven to make sure that your cookies don't stick to the cookie sheet, etc. And I had a piece of it left over from some stuff I was using on my craft desk. And all I did was adhere it to that wooden stick. Now, if you don't have a carpenter shim, you can use a stick, you can use a wooden ruler. You want to just make sure you don't use anything plastic if you're going to be applying heat. So all I did was take a little bit of craft glue and put it on the back of my die cut, the Hugs die cut. And then once I was done with that, I put it on directly on the, the DIY embossing stick. 
here's what I love about this. So I can put this on here and you're like, oh my gosh, it's going to be all messy. It really won't be. It actually comes off really nicely, but stays on there just beautifully just because I need it only to emboss. So you don't have to use that craft tacky glue. You can actually use um, even, uh, you know, paper, to, uh, the, the paper tear tape if you want to use that. Um, but here's what I love about this. I can turn this around and stick this right on my inking embossing pad and I don't have to get my fingers in it and it doesn't distort my die cut because it's sitting on a flat surface. Now if you don't have that, you could actually consider using one of those really small cutting boards and putting some oven liner or even parchment paper on that, something that will take heat. So you're not limited to just this. I use this because it's easy to store and it's really long and I can use it whenever I want. It's also long enough so that when I have all this ink on it and I put this embossing powder on it, when I do that, I don't have to worry about burning my hands. How many of you guys use that? And if I were to use tweezers, then there's a portion of the die cut that actually has that embossing ink, that does the embossing ink and the powder that doesn't stick on it because you have the... Um, the tweezers there. So I am I really like this method. This has been working really well for me and I didn't put a lot of embossing powder on here but then you're like well what about the portion that is sticking on the actual stick itself and that um, the oven liner? Well remember it's non-stick so it's not going to stick on here and then you'll just have those really small bits of the embossing powder that you can scrape right off and then use this all over again for your next die cut. And I love the fact that it keeps this die cut very sturdy so I, it's not distorted, it's put on there just perfectly and it doesn't lose its shape. So I wanted to demonstrate that even though the die cut is completely done with all the embossing powder, I decided to heat up all the embossing powder that's stuck to the black oven liner that's stuck to the stick, right? So I'm doing that because I wanted to show you how easy it is to scrape off once it's done. And it's just a dream. And I wanted to show you how easy that die cut comes off even without distorting it. So I'm just taking a little bit of a, of a tool. I don't know where I found this, but somewhere in my craft stash. I have this little tool that's meant for something different. And look at how easily this pops off. Remember, I put some glue behind it, some craft tacky glue, and it was just enough to get it to stay in place. But now watch this. This is so cool. I love this. And I can just scrape this off. Now, if you have a credit card or a gift card that's not used or that's expired, you can just use this to scrape this right off. I'm using something small, but this is so nice because now that this is done, you know, the stick doesn't burn. It's away from the heat's away from my fingers. I don't have a distorted die cut. It works perfectly and I love it. And then when I'm done, I can use it all over again. So I'd love to know in the comments section which one of these hacks or tips was your favorite and which ones do you think you're going to be using or do you use something completely different that you'd like to share with everybody else who's watching this video. Anyway, thank you so much for your comments, your likes and subscribes. I really appreciate it. It helps me bring new content and lets YouTubers know that we are creating content that's good for you. On the screen are a couple of more videos for you if you're interested. I thank you so much for stopping by, for your liking, subscribing, and commenting. It means a lot to me. Thanks so much, and until we see each other again, ciao for now.